Praise God. We welcome you for another day on our teachings on parenting. We still continue with this series on parenting. And today we want to talk about the character development. The character development. And I will cover two after introduction I will cover two examples and the rest I will cover in the next session because there are six. Character is not your temperament. That is inborn and serves as a foundation for your personality to begin to, to build on. Character is not your personality that is learned. Character is the quality of your personality and temperament. That is character. Character is the craftsmanship in building the uniqueness of who you are. Character is using every act and thought of your life as a stone and character is a long-standing habit that is character our minds are given to us but character we develop moral character is the craftsmanship in building the uniqueness of my character and teaching my children a divine way of life. Christian character is equal to moral and social excellence. The basis of character is represented by the presence or absence of the following attribute. Respect honor and honesty. Those are the basis of character. If in a relationship with God the following natural relationships provide the basis for character, for character training, respect for one, authority, two, parents, three, elderly people, four peers and siblings, five property of others, and six nature. These relationships are like the spokes of a wagon wheel. Spokes of a wagon wheel. Esteem for others holds the spokes together. Respect, honor, and honesty are like the hub of a wagon wheel. The spikes this relationship. And therefore, I want to talk about respect and honesty. And next time, we will talk about... No, I want to talk about respect and honor, and next time we will talk about honesty and other things. Respect for authority. Authority includes God, the state, the church, school to me, city, etc. Authority is not the law, the power to represent enforces the law. It does not make everyone equal, but it treats everyone with equality. That means keeps everyone living and playing by the virtues by sorry by the rules when you play by the rules you honor those outside of self when you cheat in life you dishonor others all authority originates from god and you can get that from romans chapter 13 verse 1 Authority governs 
us. When you drive a car, fly a, pl a plane, and attend a service, cross a street, eat in a restaurant, God wants us to respect authority in Romans verse, chapter 13 verse 23. And to train our children to do the same in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 4. Without authority, there would be chaos, confusion, and destruction. <clears throat> the more we move away from biblical morality, the more dependent we make ourselves to be controlled outwardly. Yielding to authority is acknowledging the preciousness of other by restraining my self-motivation, by restraining my self-motivations. Authority and your child, how do you respond to forms of authority in front of your child? The way adults respond to authority sets patterns their children will follow. Parental example reinforces and gives credibility to parental instruction. Children will interpret the standard according to our behavior as parents. Our submission to authority is more than outward act of compli compliance. It is an attitude of heart that accepts authority has been put over me by divine appointment. Often a bitter attitude towards authority, often a bitter attitude towards God. Number two, respect for parents. Respect for parents. Bible's mandate Teaching respect, honor for parents is equal to teaching children how to show respect for others. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, the Bible says, Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving. Honor has a promise attached to it, to it. This honor has a curse attached to it. Do not allow your children to mock your positions as their guardian by their impulsive thoughts, words, or deeds. For when they do, they also mock God. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 17 the eye that mocks a father and scorns obedience to his mother, the ravens of the valley will pick it out, and the young eagles will eat it. And Exodus 21 verse 15 to 17. And he who strikes his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And he who curses his father or his mother shall, <coughs> shall surely be put to death. That is Exodus 50, 21. And Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9a. If anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed his father and mother, and his blood will be on his head. His blood will be on his head. God takes parenting serious. So parents should not allow their children to make a mockery of their lofty position. Parents as governor of the fifth commandment, is your child characterized by disobedience, behavior, or even cursing? It begins with the parent. Children will not automatically obey, respect, 
hona or hona or hona you if okay sorry it it is contrary to the flesh parents are god's appointed governors of their children's souls children's very natures make them unfit to govern themselves and they will bring judgment on themselves realize ali that your children will not honor you by nature you must insist upon allegiances to your position for your respect god to them for you represent god to them in spite of many authority positions the fifth commandment only names the father and mother because they are the first governors to which a child obedience are obligated it affects all other behavior in authority it affects them shameful parenting it is shameful when children speak to parents as if they are speaking to their peers it is shameful to hear a child demand things through verbal commands it is sinful for a child even more to see parents cater for such demands it is disgraceful to hear young children speak harshly to parents without correction the clay of a young child's heart is still wet rightly or wrongly by intent or neglect, neglect neglect you will mold the clay and be held responsible may the lord have mercy on us as we mold our children attitudes of behavior to understand it is important to understand the following attitudes of behavior one obedience two submission and three honor obedience the bible instructs children to obey in ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 children obey your parents in the lord for this is just and in colossians chapter 3 verse 20 children obey your parents in everything for this is pleasing to the lord obedience in greek hupakuo means to line up under someone out of duty used in scripture for children slaves soldiers and servants obedience is a moral obligation number 2 is submission submission in greek means hupostaso hupostaso which means to line up under out of devotion used in scripture of of wives submission speaks of willingness to submit children must be trained and helped to exchange obedience for submission and an trained heart reflects one self centeredness and two lack of self control obedience is necessary to shape a child's behavior develop a child's system and act as a schoolmaster <coughs> as it is described in galatians chapter 3 verse 24 freedom means obeying for the sake of doing right and not out of fear of reproof obedience is the art of honoring not the end obedience helps to bring child selfish tenderness to self control in life 
Obedience means to transform from written law to stone in onto the heart. Obedience moves the child from external motivation to internal control. For example, if hemmed in or fenced by the truth, obedience goes over into submission, willingful devotion to parents. When the child accepts God as the ultimate authority. Number three is honor. Children who marry are still required to honor their parents. But as adults, they no longer need to submit and be obedient to their parents once they have once they leave their parents they form a new structure within the marriage and they cleave to new authority structure of leading male or submitting female the woman now submits to god and her husband and the husband submits to god obedience and submission to parents are thus replaced but honor of parents remain the hard question then is do you or your children honor out of devotion or out of duty honor a deep respect given with love comes from love and devotion love based on time knowledge experience and appreciation is not a choice but can only please god when it flows from a pure heart a commandment meant to be a pleasing not a struggle it is a pleasing but not a struggle and that is very key for many children to understand that even if you have no, you have had a hard life do not speak evil of your parents slander them let them go hungry ignore them in time of need the bible standard love your neighbors yourself because you love you lose the joy of honoring when you lose the duty of looking and taking care of your parents. Joyful honor must be the legacy that every Christian parent should pass on to their children. It doesn't matter what type of relationship you had with your parents. Parents often want friendship with their children in the early years instead of requiring obedience building friendship god's way calls us to disciple our children bringing them from bringing them from innocence and foolishness to maturity and wisdom as it is stated in proverbs chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. john the gospel of john chapter 15 verse 5 no longer do I call you, you, you servants or disciples. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have, you, I have heard of Father, I have made known to you. The Lord's pattern of discipleship. As a teacher, he reminds them, a student is not greater than the teacher. As their shepherd, he brought conformity to their thinking by creating a like-mindedness and direction for life. As their Lord, he brought their discipline to completion and it entered into friendship with them as parents we should do the same friendship comes after disciplining children wisely in the wisdom of god 
friendly friendship with our children is not the starting point of parenting by our God. Before friendship need to successful pass through three phases. One, disciple discipline, birth to life to five years. That is zero to five years. Not oppressive, but authoritative. Through tight boundaries, giving way to freedom as they demonstrate responsibility, responsible behavior. To get control of the child so that he can be trained. If you cannot control your child, you cannot train him to his full potential, nor will anyone else do. Two, training from age 6 to 12 years. Like an athlete, different drill settings and exercises. Stopping any time for immediate correction. Explaining the reasons. Showing them what to do and how to do it. This is not yet the real game of life. Only in practice seasons. Number three is coaching from age 13 to age 19 years. In the game of life for themselves, we can advise from the sideline. We can handle during time outs. We can no longer stop the game for times of extended training or show them how it is to be to be played they themselves call the play and move forward a good coach is determined by how well they they run through the game of life a good trainer is determined by how they respond to your coaching a good discipl disciplinarian is determined by your ability to train your children a good ruler will be determined by the type of dis dis disciplinarian you are friendship friendship a re relation relation relational goal of parenting parent child relationship does not stop both parent child enter into a new season of life both parents child enter into a new season of life and both parents and, ch and, and child end relationship does not stop and as the lord hid with his disciples it begins with tight boundaries going over into responsible behavior leading to free to freedom to life so it is not easy it is it is not easy it is not easy to develop character in our children it is difficult and we must know that and i want to encourage you that next time we will continue with the same topic dealing with the respect for the age as we continue i believe that these teachings are edifying you and are enabling you to be to, to learn something as a parent on how to bring up our children and first how to learn even if we never learned this from our parents we have a duty to learn them for the sake of our own personal life and the life of our children and the people around us god bless you thank you for being faithful and always subscribing and making giving comments i enjoy reading comments from you father we thank you and we bless you that indeed you are god who never shared the glory with anybody you are god of impos impossibilities you are god who command honor who command respect 
and who command many other things. We thank you, Father, that you are God who hears and God who answers prayer. We thank you that as parents go through this and as young people so go through to understand this for themselves so that one day when they become parents, they will be responsible parents. We thank you and we bless you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. Meet again. Thank you.